my name is Lou Molitor, and I am the uh, president of the Kenosha Area Chamber of Commerce. And we're delighted to be able to pre uh, present this update on COVID-19, especially for the business community, as we'll have some information about getting vaccines and, and the importance of getting your employee, employees vaccinated. Uh, Dr. Jen Freiheit will be um, our guest to speak. I'll introduce her in just a second. I do have a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, first of all, uh, please uh, mute yourself uh, so that any phone calls or interruptions don't interrupt Dr. Uh, Freiheit's presentation. And also when we get going with the presentation, you can enable speaker view so you'll be able to see uh, just Dr. Freiheit uh, during the presentation. Uh, many of you have emailed questions to us, and I sent those questions uh, to Dr. Freiheit and, and with the hope that she'll incorporate uh, those in her presentation. Uh, if you have additional questions, please email them to info at KenoshaAreaChamber.com. Uh, uh, I'm not going to entertain questions. We have too many people on the, the event here to do that, um, but we will get your questions answered or to Dr. Freiheit if you should email us. Um, so without any further ado, let me introduce uh, Dr. Jennifer Freiheit, who has been with, uh, who's been the health officer and the director of the Kenosha County Division of Health since December of 2019. She has 18 years experience working in state and local public health within Wisconsin, including preparing for pandemics much as uh, we're in right now. So uh, Dr. Freiheit, uh, it's all yours. <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me and uh, happy Wednesday. We have a uh, one of our vaccination clinics starting in 30 minutes as well too. So we're busy, busy trying to get shots in arms. So I'm excited to be here and I uh, have the list of questions I will run down, but I just wanted to say, you know, I started like what, 14 months ago and nobody told me this pandemic was coming. Uh, otherwise, I might have thought differently about the job. <laughs> so it has been a whirlwind of a year, and I love seeing all of your faces. Thank you. I recognize many of your faces. Um, so it's it's been a whirlwind of a year. You know, the health department uh, has really just been in the trenches seven days a week, extremely long days. We're, we're tired. Um, you know, it's really easy to see in the nightly news, you know, the hospitals when they have beds in the hallways and and and, and nurses and doctors stressed. And um, and people have asked me, well, what does a health department look like? And, and I'm like, well, it's just a bunch of desks and cubicles and offices. <laughs> it's you know no different than any other office. But so we don't have cots and hallways. But uh, but we we are in that same mode of um, having been at war with this virus, you know, this pandemic for the last year. But I'll tell you, when the vaccine came the week before, in between Christmas and New Year's, um, we weren't expecting it that early. But the energy was palpable like working in our vaccine clinics is some good morale juju. It is like, it's doing some good for all the volunteers and all the staff that are working in there. We can finally see the pinpoint light at the end of the tunnel. So um, it's reinvigorated us and, and we're, we're uh, rocking it. We're getting shots in arms. We have all sorts of efforts and initiatives going to try to increase, um, you know, people to get vaccinated. And uh, one of which is today on this call. And, um, and, and really just to sort of, you know, propel us forward. My big vision, my big goal is that Kenosha County is one of the first counties to reach herd immunity. And we're ripping off our masks and we're enjoying all the summertime activities and, and the rest of the state is going, what did, what did they do? How come they're done already? So, uh, so that's my big vision. I want you guys to help me. I need you all as ambassadors to help us get there um, because herd immunity, what our goal is 75% for Kenosha County. That's 127,500 people that we need to get shots in arms so that we can start, you know, relaxing uh, and not having to do all the masking and all the isolation and quarantine and everything that we've been doing. Just because the vaccine is here doesn't mean that we can loosen up on any of that. I mean, clearly you're hearing about all the variants um, that are in the news. We don't have any of those variants in Kenosha yet. Um, they likely are here. We just don't have it identified yet. So, um, uh, so, you know, this is where vaccine becomes even more so important. Uh, so just a little bit first, uh, I wanted to give you some information on testing. COVID testing is still very much important. If you have employees 
who are sick, even mildly sick, you know, the scratchy throat, you know, a slight cough, they should get tested for COVID. We don't have the National Guard here anymore. Um, and we only have a couple of, of a really larger community testing sites going on right now, one of which is the Snohomish Community Health Center down at the old Chase Bank downtown. There is there is plenty of supply. There is no shortage of COVID testing supplies. And then we have the rapid test at University of Wisconsin Parkside um, who can follow up with a PCR confirmatory test. So those are our two places, no shortage. So people should continue to get tested um, throughout the rest of this year, you know, for, for any of those mild symptoms. I continue to hear people say, oh, I just have a cough, I don't think it's COVID. That could be COVID. It doesn't have to be the full blown, laid out cold fever, you know, that sort of thing. Um, it could be mild and we wanna know so that we can still contain it. Testing is the way in public health that allows us to know where the virus is moving. It allows us to contain it um, by isolation and quarantine of the family and, and that sort of thing. So we still want testing to occur. So please continue to encourage testing. Uh, so like I said, vaccines started coming right before the New Year's. Uh, we got 350 doses that week and, and we got them all in, in 1A healthcare workers arms within 2.5 days. Uh, we got our EMTs. We have over 85% uptake in all of our EMTs through all of our fire departments in the county. So we were the first county to get them in EMT arms um, and, and reach that herd immunity point for our EMTs. Uh, we started getting about 400 doses in the couple following weeks. Um, and as the health department in the last three weeks, we've gotten 2000 doses a week. So there's still a short supply of vaccine for the whole state. So that is why really nobody's getting more than 2000 doses, but we've been deemed a high, a high functioning clinic. So that's why we're getting one of the higher amounts across the state. Um, Freighter South, Aurora, Zumi Care, some of our pharmacies, Good Value, um, Meyer, Walmart, and now Walgreens, you hear coming online, Modern Apothecary. We have um, almost 10 different vaccine providers in Kenosha County now. Those are all listed on our website with direct links to how to make an appointment. Of course, appointments are still only for those in the 1A category, which is all the healthcare workers, home health, um, uh, Soon after the fire departments, police departments, law enforcement and corrections were all included. They are now counted as 1A. And then soon after that, it was opened up to the 65 plus population, which was technically 1C, but that got opened up early. So, so pretty much they've sort of obliterated the 1B and 1C categories. And, and what the State Disaster Medical Advisory Committee is now doing is just gating in groups of people um, based upon risk, risk is the first thing, and then based upon the supply that we have in the state. So right now, 1B is not open. It is still just 1A plus law enforcement, fire and corrections, plus the 65 plus. Um, the education sector and the childcare sector will open up on March 1st. So they will be eligible for vaccine on March 1st. The state is predicting we could potentially have more vaccine coming into the state by March 1st so that hopefully we could take care of those populations at that time. I think the rest of the 1B sector, which was the grocery store workers, the manufacturing plants, and um, all the uh, essential workplaces, which includes city and county government, other essential workers, much like you had the essential worker designation in the spring, those will all be um, likely open. And I, this is this is a Las Vegas bet right here is I'm guessing by mid-March because they're doing the education and, and childcare sectors first because their risk is higher um, that the rest of 1B would likely open up a week or two or three after that. So um, again, it all depends on supply. The state is only getting about 70,000 doses a week and, and all of us providers are requesting over 300,000 doses. So clearly there is not enough vaccine to go around right now. And people are antsy and eager, and I know that, um, that that causes a lot of frustration and people feel their level of risk is higher than somebody else's um, and they want to get in there and get that vaccine. We've certainly seen people falsify records and try to get in. Um, we had a couple from Ohio drive here uh, because they were desperate for, you know, it was an over 65 couple that was desperate for vaccine. I mean, people are in that desperation phase. That's what happens when the demand outweighs the supply, and that's what's happening right now. Um, so, but, but I'll tell you, you know, we are getting all 2,000 doses in by the end of Friday. 
Um, it's in large, large, large part the 65 plus population. We still have some 1A healthcare providers that um, are trickling in here and there, and we still want to get them in immediately. We have a very strong focus on our most vulnerable populations. So as soon as we can open up there, we are uh, coming up with all sorts of strategies with some of you on the call of how we can, you know, work with churches and and, and senior living apartments and, um, um, uh, you know, different even restaurants and barbershops and, and, and how we can really ensure that we get people in that, that are at most risk and get them vaccinated. So lots of efforts going on right now that we're working on. So it's exciting. We hope that, um, you know, you can all be good public health partners and help us get the messages out, uh, correct the rumors. This is, there is no government chip being installed in your skin. Um, there is no poison. Uh, I could go into great detail about what mRNA, what a messenger RNA does. In a nutshell, it really is like the teacher. Uh, it's like a teacher that's teaching all your cells how to recognize COVID if it enter, ever enters your body so it knows how to fight. Um, so you can explain it in real simple terms that way that it's the teacher cell that's going around and teaching all the other cells. Um, we have in large part in the health department been getting Moderna. We had a couple weeks of Pfizer. We never know week to week what we're getting. Um, we on Mondays get a survey from the state and it says, how many doses can you give out next week? And you know, we'll say we can handle you know, 8,000 doses next week. Uh, we can handle 10,000 doses next week. So we put in a request for what we know we can handle next week uh, by Friday or Saturday or sometimes even Sunday night is when we find out how much vaccine we're getting for that week. Uh, so literally on Sunday night, they'll say you're getting 2,000 doses instead of the 8,000 you asked for. And, um, and so then we're scrambling. Okay, we have 2,000. We have this many second doses. What days do we want clinics? How many staff can we ramp up for this week's clinic? I mean, so it's a mad scramble on Sunday nights to try to figure out what do we do for this week? And then we do it all over again the next Sunday. So it is literally very last minute, week by week planning, uh, because that's how it's coming into the state, week by week. The state is trying to do a two week out planning to try to help us a little bit more. Um, we are getting second doses as guaranteed right on time. So people are able to come back and we've already had the last couple of weeks, you know, now that we're four weeks into it, um, three weeks and four weeks into it, we've had um, both Pfizer and Moderna second doses on tw day 21 for Pfizer, day 28 for Moderna. And uh, we have largely not seen many adverse events. You know, a couple of weeks ago, the, the nation advertised or uh, put out the research that out of 1.9 million doses at that point, there were only 12 people across the country that had had anaphylaxis. So that is a very, very, very small number. These vaccines are extremely safe and in part due to that mRNA technology um, that developed it. So uh, they are very safe, very low reactions. Most of what we're hearing throughout Kenosha County is arm pain, site of injection pain later that night. Um, we are hearing of people who, um, especially on the second dose, might have headaches or, or um, lethargy or, or, or chills, not lasting longer than 24 hours. And that is really, quite honestly, um, a, a small number of people. We have not had that many people who are reporting any number of adverse events. So I know that that's what gets put in the media is, you know, oh, the second dose is worse. And so people are scared and, um, and there's no rhyme or reason. You know, there's all sorts of theories I see on the internet that, you know, women aren't getting this adverse effects, but men are and, you know, and um, all of these sorts of things, different ages or people's immune systems. And, and it, there's no rhyme or reason, just as there was no rhyme or reason really with getting COVID, you know, it was affecting people at all ages and races and ethnicities. And um, so, so it's, it's, it's good, it's effective, 94, 95% for both the Moderna and Pfizer. It's safe um, with now the millions of people that have gotten the vaccine, you know, it is, it's showing really effective. One of the things we don't know yet, and this is always the big question is, can I still spread COVID if I've been vaccinated twice? And, and we don't know that answer yet. That research is happening right now. The research is expected to be out in May. So I know that that's a ways off, that's not soon enough. But because of that is the reason why even if somebody has had both of their doses of COVID vaccine, we still have to follow isolation and quarantine practices. If you've been a close contact, we still have to wear masks. We still have to practice social distancing. None of that has changed because we just don't know enough yet 
if the vaccine keeps somebody from being able to spread COVID. We also don't know yet. This was part of the Operation Warp Speed, which I agree was a terrible name because that got people thinking like corners were cut. Um, and corners were not cut. Uh, it was, you know, these, these pharmaceutical companies had processes in place long before COVID for this very moment. I mean, these things were in place since 2009 with H1N1. They were preparing for this moment, which allowed things to happen faster. Doesn't mean corners were cut or that things were shorted because it happened faster. For example, in vaccine trials, normally it takes 10 to 12 years. And that's because they do pregnant women and then they do children and then they do, you know, they do all of these groups. When they did the, the trial groups with 40, you know, 40,000 people, it was not with children. They're doing those trials now because they wanted to be able to get the vaccine out quicker. So that's why children aren't allowed to get vaccinated now. Those trials are happening right now to make sure it's safe and effective for them. That likely won't happen until next fall. Um, when, and again, that's my, my betting, my betting side is that by the time they figure out and, and they get approval for children, that will happen next fall, um, or sooner, hopefully. And, um, so, so that was, you know, part of the, how do we get vaccine out quickly and safely? Um, and then it has all these stipulations and it takes a long time to manufacture. So that's why supply is low. Um, hopefully you just saw in the national news, Wisconsin, that was, is the, best in the Midwest. I don't know what they named us as far as getting vaccine in arms. So we're doing really good in Wisconsin there. Um, but, but, you know, helping to know that message that, you know, just because it was called warp speed does not mean that that it's not safe or that, or that corners were cut there. For the Moderna, with one dose, you have 43 to 84% um, immunity. That's a big range, 43 to 84%. And again, it's because everybody is different. Um, with the second dose, it gets everybody up to 95%. So 94, 95%. So that's why the second dose is so important. We, I've heard rumors that people think, um, well, I had COVID last fall, and so I only need one dose because now I have double immunity. No, you don't. <laughs> um, you're, when you had COVID, your immunity waned within 90 days. Um, so having COVID in the past means nothing, quite often. And I know one of the top questions I had was, um, was there a waiting period for those who had had COVID? Initially, there was a waiting period because of that 90-day immunity. If you just had COVID, we wanted to save shots for people that didn't have immunity. So there was no contraindication to getting the COVID vaccine right after you've had COVID. It was because you already have immunity, save the shot for somebody else. Just two weeks ago, that was lifted nationally and statewide, um, and, and we as well lifted it locally, that we no longer even ask that question. If you had COVID in the last 10 days, we do ask that because then you shouldn't even be in our clinic, you should be in isolation. Um, but if you had COVID you know, 11 or more days ago, we'll still give you the vaccine because um, even though you have immunity, that, that whole stipulation has been wiped away. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna go, Lou, if I may, down some of the questions and so that I will be able to answer questions for you all. But I know there was a question that said, um, everybody thinks I have the crystal ball. And that's why I always uh, say that, you know, this is a Las Vegas bet, but how do you see the vaccine come in about May? And my hope is that by May, supply is plentiful. We're fully open. None of this like 1A, 65 plus. By May, it should be come one, come all. Everybody come in. We have plenty of vaccine. We're going to get you all done. And in May, you know, for Kenosha County, our big goal is we are planning massive mass community vac vaccination clinics because um, we have spaces that are allowing us to be able to get about 3,000 people through a day. And if I can get 3,000 people through a day, you know, running five days a week, we can get to summertime. And that's my goal. Nobody wants this pandemic over with more than the health department. We want this done. Um, so, so that's what I'm hoping by May. I don't have the crystal ball though. Hopefully supply catches up with that. Um, the next question was, is the South African variant more lethal than others? Certainly that's what we're hearing. All sorts of study is happening right now to see if the current vaccine helps against these other variants. And what we're seeing is that it helps to decrease hospitalization and death. So while you still may get one of these other COVID variants, you won't die from it. <laughs> so that's a really, really good thing. Um, and all the more reason to get this vaccine sooner versus later because, um, you know, viruses mutate, that's what they do. 
you all have likely had coronavirus in your life because um, there's like 20 some varieties of coronavirus and most of them are the common cold. You probably get coronavirus every year when you get your common cold. Um, but it just so happens COVID-19 obviously is very different, very lethal. Um, you know, so that's why it's a pandemic as opposed to the other coronaviruses. Uh, are COVID infections still on the rise now that the vaccine is available? So having the vaccine available is not necessarily yet affecting our COVID infections. Our infection rate though started coming down um, shortly after uh, the holidays. And we are actually really low as far as the percent positive, um, the number of cases we have in Kenosha County right now. That could be for a whole host of reasons, but one of the biggest reasons is because not many people are getting tested. So I say that with all hesitancy that our numbers are low right now, but so is our testing. So, I, you know, the COVID is certainly still spreading throughout Kenosha County. We just don't know where in the numbers. Our death rate is still way too high. We still are averaging about one to two deaths a day in Kenosha County, and it's terrible. Um, our hospitalization rates have come down. Our cases have come down. But because of that death rate not coming down yet, that tells me it's still spreading widely um, and that uh, people are just not necessarily you know, reporting it or getting tested. They're, they're fighting through it like they would any other type of cold. So so it's still a concern. We're still considered a highly infectious county. We're not out of the woods. Certainly getting more people vaccinated will help that. I think it's too soon to see that data because it's only been, you know, six weeks that we have had vaccine in, in Kenosha County. So, um, so there is some good news there, but I say it with caution. Um, can you clear up some of the confusion about the vaccine groups, the state, the CDC, and Kenosha County have conflicting information? And, and really we're not conflicting, it's just different levels. The CDC puts out really broad, broad levels, 1A, 1B, 1C. Then it was up to the state, the, the, the State Disaster Medical Advisory Committee through the State Health Department to determine, to define those categories a little bit better. So they defined them, they put those out for public comment, they put those on their website. Um, what happens at the local level is that we find we have to define it even more. You know, all, all public health is local. So no matter how definitive the state gets, there's still nuances that play out at the local level. Um, so for example, the state uh, just recently opened up vaccine to all parents and caregivers that have a child in birth to three. That's about 700 families in Kenosha County. Um, and it's very hard. These are people without credentials. It's not like uh, nurses or doctors who can come and show their badge at our clinics. These are moms and dads and grandparents who um, don't have a credential that are saying, yep, my kid's in birth to three. Um, so, so we have to then at the local level sort of figure out, okay, and that's where you may hear rumors that the health department isn't, you know, checking IDs or, or they're not checking credentials. It's virtually impossible. With home health care, many people are self-employed. There are no credentials or a badge for that. Um, so it's virtually impossible to check IDs. Plus, our undocumented residents are more disproportionately affected by COVID-19. And, um, and we are certainly not going to be prohibitive and ask for IDs um, for our most vulnerable populations. So, um, so that's where you see it's not conflicting. We're in line with the state and the state's in line with CDC. It's just that we get more nuanced and into the details as we get local. Uh, has there been a sense of frustration from employers about getting employees vaccinated? Yep, <laughs> we have had all the calls um, that are inundating us because everybody's very eager to get vaccinated. Um, and everybody thinks their risk is much higher than everybody else, um, which is why the State Disaster Medical Advisory Committee has these, you know, gating criteria and these rules about who truly is more at risk than somebody else. Um, so as soon as things can open up, everybody will get vaccinated. This is coming much, much faster than I expected. We really thought in public health that we wouldn't get vaccine until like March. And here it was the week before New Year's, you know, so um, it's coming much faster. So just a little more patience. You'll all get vaccinated. And I'm really hoping the media can spin that to say, as opposed to how long are your lines or you're not checking IDs to spin it to say, look how eager everyone is to get over this pandemic that we need to spin it to the positive. I mean, we're getting lots of shots in arms. We are saving a lot of lives. Um, so that's the good thing. Um, oh, how will essential workers be defined in Wisconsin? 
that I don't know yet. That's still yet to come from the State Disaster Medical Advisory Committee. And that work is happening literally right now today. Um, how will you ensure all Category 1A have been vaccinated before getting to 1B? And who determines this? So, so 1B is, like I sort of mentioned, is virtually gone. We hit a plateau at about 35% of our 1A providers in Kenosha County. I don't know why. I think it has to do with a whole host of reasons from, um, you know, some people were hesitant. They wanted to see their, their buddy get the vaccine first and see if they grew a third eye or a third arm. And then they found out they didn't. And so then they came in, um, you know, just like with adopting any technology, you know, there's the first people that buy the iPhone and, you know, other people waited and it's kind of like the bell curve. Then everybody gets an iPhone and then it trails off and there's still some people with flip phones out there, right? So same thing with vaccine is that there's going to be the early adopters and that's who we're seeing right now, especially in the 65 plus population. Um, we'll get a lot of people in the middle and then we will trickle off and we'll still be doing COVID vaccinations indefinitely. Um, so, uh, so that's where, you know, um, I think with the 1A category, yes, there were even healthcare workers that were unsure. I, I would say myself, even last October, I was like, uh, you know, warp speed, what does that mean? What is it doing? I'm a research scientist by nature, so I read all the fine print, um, and I read all the research studies that the FDA had to read, and I mean, I know that that's hard for the lay person to, to read that, but when I read it, that's when I said, yeah, this is super safe. This is, you know, so it takes a bit of that education to, to sort of, you know, feel more comfortable with that. And so it just takes time for people to get more comfortable. Um, when we hit that plateau of 35%, though, that's when we were starting to sit on vaccine. And we were telling the state health department, hey, you know, the, the healthcare workers are not coming in in droves anymore and we're sitting on vaccine now. And that's when they then opened it up to the whole state for law enforcement, fire and corrections. And then when we sort of went through that population, we said, okay, we're starting to sit on it again. That's when they opened it up to the 65 plus population, you know, so, so it's really the state is hearing from us locals to say, we don't want to sit on this. We want to get shots in arms immediately. It's, um, it's the biggest mortal sin to uh, waste any or have any <laughs> go at the end of the day or whatnot. So we, uh, we make sure we just get those shots. In, uh, in your estimation in regards to herd immunity, what percentage of Wisconsin and U.S. population is now immune? So I, those numbers are all on, um, you know, CDC's websites and whatnot. We have on our Kenosha County COVID hub website, and I don't know if there's a chat box, but maybe I, uh, we can put it into the uh, uh, chat box, the, the Kenosha County website. We are tracking and updating daily, and I'm gonna try to talk and chew gum at the same time here, um, how far along we are with vaccine in Kenosha County. We are now at almost 10%, I believe, and I'm gonna copy and paste the link because you can actually watch this daily. All right, let me just paste here because this is a link that you guys can all look at where we, we literally put out um, and we'll be soon adding race and ethnicity demographics. We had to wait a little bit because it was too identifying because quite honestly, we had a small number at the start. Um, and that's part of our equi equity issue that we're working on, you know, uh, large part because of the 1A, the healthcare workers are largely white. Um, so soon there will be race and ethnicity uh, data on our website, but we also are tracking how many first and second doses we have in the county um, and getting to that herd immunity goal. So you can see there's a little like ticker that, that is trying to get us to our goal that you can see that on the website. So you can see the state on the state's website and the nation on the, on the CDC website and, and who, how we're getting to herd immunity that way. Uh, is there currently an antibody test that is accurate? If we've had COVID, I know they keep telling us that we should still get the vaccine to increase immunity, but I'd still like to know before I went um, to see if my body is already building antibodies. So we already know that if you've had COVID, you have antibodies for 90 days. It completely wanes after 90 days and you have done. So to get an antibody test at this point is pretty futile. It doesn't really prove or show you anything. Um, so, so whether you had COVID, you know, if you had COVID a month ago, you probably still have antibodies. So again, why get the antibody test? You, you, you likely have antibodies <laughs> if you've had it in the last 90 days. So, um, so the point is we need to know, we need to get you vaccinated. The one thing we don't know about the vaccine yet is will it become uh, an annual vaccine like the flu shot you get every year? Or will it be a once a lifetime vaccine much as um, 
measles, mumps, rubella, or something like that that you had when you were a kid. We don't know that. That was part of that Operation Warp Speed that we they didn't wait for that answer in order to get vaccine out as fast as possible. That research is also happening right now, and that's another one by May. By May, we will know hopefully that answer. You know, my thing is don't let that discourage you. I mean, if you have to get it once a year, get it once a year, just like you do your flu shot. You know, so um, uh, so so don't let that be the determining factor, whether it's a once in a lifetime or a once a year shot. We will figure that out when we get there. Right now, let's just end this pandemic. So um, let's see. Sorry, I'm going to, I think I answered some of these. Um, uh, let's see, vaccine availability for Kenosha County, I mentioned. Estimated time frame to get to 75%. That all hinges on when children can get the vaccine, because clearly children are a big population uh, in Kenosha County. So as soon as children can get it, and, um, and you know, schools are used to doing, you know, annual vaccinations, you know, there's um, exclusion periods within schools to make sure kids are vaccinated for school. So we have, a, we have good confidence that we'll get high rates of herd immunity um, with that. Um, I answered when we'll begin vaccinating category 1B. Uh, uh, hospitality industry, when will, when will we get vaccinated? I do believe those will be considered the essential workers and that's where I sort of guessed mid-March um, as far as essential workers, local government workers, um, other frontline, um, I know somebody put it in here as frontline, but I think you were meaning essential workers that way. Where will those who fall in 1A or 1B who don't have access to the vaccine through their employer be able to access the vaccine? So that's on that Kenosha County Hub website is anytime a new vaccine provider comes online, we put their link that whether they, whether it's a phone call appointment or a sign up genius or whatever, we put that link on our website. So the website is the place to go to find out all things um, that you need to know. Uh, any news on those who don't fall into any of the current categories will be able to access the vaccine. That's that's the whenever the supply increases and they sort of get rid of the whole one B one C and they open it up to the the whole community. So, you know, I really think um, by April that that could happen. That again, that's my Las Vegas bet. Um, will testing sites remain in place or add more options in the future? There will likely not be more options because the funding for it quite honestly went away. Um, so that's a shame. Um, but I think the state is working on other testing options. They're certainly working on those home purchase tests that you can, you know, get in your home and send back. Uh, so more will come down the pike with testing. But for right now, we have plenty of testing at our two, two locations. And when will vaccine number one be readily available with number two, 21 days available after? If I understand the question correct, we are getting all second doses and we're able to get people second doses right away. So. So that's where we are with that. I'm looking at the chat box. There was a question of, is there a do not waste list here? Um, there is no list. I, and I keep hearing that in the community. There's rumors of some list. There is no list. Um, what we do at the end of the day when we have, so both Moderna and Pfizer, once you pop a vial, it has a limited amount of time um, before it's considered uh, wasted or not being able to be used. Um, for Moderna is six hours, for Pfizer it's 30 minutes. Um, so we have a limited amount of time to get vaccine in arms. So at the end of a clinic day, inevitably there will have been some no-shows or somebody we had to turn away, but there's always a couple doses at the end of every day. We basically, um, uh, that's where sometimes if there's a walk-in, a 65 plus person that comes near the end of the day, we can get them as a walk-in. If, um, you know, if we need to call a 1A worker, we still know that there's, for example, hospice agencies that didn't get all of their staff through and they were considered 1A, um, that we can call that agency and say, hey, did you have anybody else that needs a vaccine? Can they get here right now? Um, so that's all across the country. That is not unique to Kenosha County. But like I said, the biggest sin is wasting doses. We are not, we have never wasted a dose. None goes into the garbage. Um, none expires. We make sure we get a shot in arm. Um, and I know that that seems very unfair. Um, our bottom line is we need to end this pandemic and we get shots in arms. However, we need to get shots in arms at the end of the day so that we're not wasting any. Uh, but there is no list. Certainly, if you are a 1A provider or you have a family member that's 65 plus and they're having trouble getting um, an appointment, we now have a call center. And I'm going to put that... Um, phone number as well. 
uh, into the chat box. One thing that was really bothersome to us is when the state opened up to the 65 plus population, we in public health had zero warning. We found out about it at the same time you all did through the media. And we went, oh my God, <laughs> we were not expecting that group to open up. We were not prepared for that group. Um, and the problem was because so many in the 65 plus population don't have email, don't have internet. And at that point in our clinic, because things were so tightly controlled to the 1A population, everything was via email and the internet. So it created a very privileged clinic that then the 65 plus population couldn't access. So from that moment, that announcement was made from the governor's office. We started working with our IT and our HR department to ramp up a call center. So that the 65 plus population or any of our vulnerable populations that don't have email access or internet access or don't know to go to our county website, that we could get them an appointment. That just went live last Wednesday. So in government world, with all the red tape, that was really, really fast. <laughs> um, that we were able to do that that fast. In the public's eye, I know that that seemed woefully inadequate. Um, because our phone lines were ringing off the hook. At one point, we had 700 and some odd messages on our voicemail because we could not even answer the calls fast enough. And we didn't have the bodies. Um, so we had to have our HR, you know, staff this call center with 20 people. We had to find um, uh, people who could speak Spanish. We had to uh, work with our Aging and Disability Resource Center. I mean, so there was many, many things that had to go in just to ramp up this call center. But it's now live. Um, and we are able to help people get their appointments that way. So uh, the press release just went out on it yesterday. So that is, uh, we went live last Wednesday as we sort of tested out. We were getting over 100 calls a day, even though I don't know how the number got out there. So that was really amazing. <laughs> um, but it went out in a press release yesterday. So now today we're expecting um, huge amounts of calls to come and, and to be able to handle the population that way. So, um, so I think that was all the questions I had that uh, Lou had sent to me, but I can certainly answer any other questions. Oh, and I see there was another question that was direct message to me. Is there help to assist elderly with registering for the vaccine? Press release yesterday, yes, okay. Um, and I just mentioned it. So uh, we also are collecting a list. The one list we do have is for homebound populations. So people who um, do, cannot get to a vaccination clinic, um, when supply increases, we'll eventually be able to have a mobile strike team that can go out and vaccinate people in their homes. Um, we are helping out with a mobile strike team very, very soon to be able to do smaller group homes and assisted livings. Um, so we're going to be getting out and, and getting um, those folks uh, vaccinated real soon and then hopefully by next week even. Uh, so we are formulating some of those lists to be able to get, get people vaccinated that way. Um, of course, homebound people are at a lower risk. Um, because they're not necessarily leaving the home, but but we are making sure that we will get to them. Um, and then, yeah, our Aging and Disability Resource Center has been answering phone lines for us and, and also helping with um, how people can get transportation. There is a, a federal grant coming out that we're very much going to apply for that we can hope to get additional transportation vouchers and help people in whatever means necessary to get to clinics. Um, and we're also working on clinics spread around the county right now because it was started so small. It was just right here at the job center at 8600 Sheridan. Um, but soon there will, you know, and there's also the pharmacies that are spread out. Clearly west of the eye is a vaccine desert and we're working on that. We have plans for that um, as soon as supply increases and that we'll get vaccine in a variety of different methods, whether it's after a Sunday church service or a mobile van or, you know, we, we have many, many things working in place right now to get beyond where we are. Um, Racine residents able to get vaccinated in Kenosha. I know some people have slipped through the cracks. My short answer is no. We get several calls from Franklin to Illinois, you know, to Racine saying, can I come get vaccinated there? Our vaccine is for Kenosha County residents or for people who work in Kenosha County. We know we, that we have many people that live over the border in Illinois, but they work in Kenosha County. If you're here five days a week, 40 hours, you could be spreading COVID to all of our residents just as easily as somebody that lives here. So it is very difficult for, for counties like us on the border. You know, we are constantly talking to Walworth and um, all the bordering counties on Minnesota and Michigan too to say, how are you guys handling this? It's a problem everywhere on borders that, um, um, you know, people are crossing borders and, and that's inevitable because of how people live and work in, in various places. We're a mobile society. So the short answer is no, we are, our clinics are for those who live and work in Kenosha County 
obviously if somebody's bold enough to falsify their records and give a fake address, you know, that's how some have slipped through. We're, we're definitely trying to crack down on that and, and make sure that um, people call their own municipal health department and go through their own clinics. So I've rambled on a long time and those are all the questions in the chat box, but uh, what else can I answer for you? Well, Dr. Fire, I have uh, Lupe here. So whenever you're finished, we can go ahead with the conclusion of the uh, event with uh, me getting vaccinated. Um, unless sure. there are some other questions that people uh, have of you. So, so Lupe is our amazing nurse practitioner who, and Lou qualifies for the vaccine. So we, uh, we thought we'd give you a live presentation so you can see that Lou is not gonna grow a third arm when this happens and to see that it's safe and he's not going to keel over or faint or anything like that. There's Lupe. Thanks, Lupe. Um, so we're going to do a live demonstration of getting your shot. I just want to say again before this is because I know that uh, Lupe is going to be here for a few minutes afterwards. But um, uh, thank you, Dr. Farhead, for giving us this presentation today. Um, if anyone has questions, I know they can email uh, you or your the public health department, or they can um, uh, give the chamber an email at info at Kenosha Area Chamber, and we can get any questions to you. I do want to mention one real quick thing, just to finish up. Um, there's no Kenosha Expo right now in May. I know a lot of people are just in March. A lot of people are disappointed about that, but we are having a Kenosha Small Business Week event from March 7th through March 13th. It's on the chamber's uh, website. Uh, small businesses are welcome to participate. So we're going to highlight all the small businesses because this pandemic has caused a lot of uh, consternation and hard times for many small businesses. So visit our website and get more information about that. So uh, without any further ado, let's get this done and we'll go from there. Again, thank you again, Dr. Fry. Thank you. Lupe is amazing. We have many amazing nurses giving shots in our clinics and um, um, you won't even feel it. Probably not. <laughs> I can say Al for you if you'd appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Is he done already? I didn't even, I didn't even feel it. <laughs> Yay! He's that fast. All right. So I guess the message here is when you're eligible, get your vaccine. Businesses, when you're eligible, get your employees vaccinated. And let's all work together to get rid of this pandemic. Yes, please. Herd immunity. Let's get there. Let's have a great summer. <laughs> Thanks a lot.